more breaking news tonight. In fact, it is a moment 59 years in the making. The National Archives tonight has released more than 13,000 documents related to the 1963 assassination of President John F. Kennedy, the second of two releases ordered last year by President Biden. Extraordinary because of the subject matter as well as the decades it's taken to finally see these documents. The CIA tonight says it has now released all information known to be related directly to the assassination, with about 95% of all agency documents within the JFK Assassination Records Collection Act now public in their entirety. CNN's Tom Foreman joins us with more on this milestone. What, what, what do we know about these documents so far? Well, we know, first of all, as you noted, there are a lot of them. Anderson, this is the equivalent of a dozen copies of War and Peace being dumped out there. And yet this is a tiny fraction of the roughly 5 million documents related to the JFK assassination. We also know, based on what uh, some JFK assassination historians have said, what the CIA has said, what other people have shown, what history has shown, that what we're not likely to find in this is any kind of giant breakthrough, some really smoking gun explanation here as to how this happened or some secret conspiracy, nothing that will satisfy the conspiracy theorists out there. That said, there are a lot of interesting details here, Anderson. Like what? What have you found so far? Well, a lot of it has to do with the process of how the CIA goes about things. Uh, some of that explains partially why this has been hidden for so long, so it doesn't reveal their methods, how they surveilled people down in Mexico, Soviet uh, people down there had secret wiretaps down there. At one point, there's a, a small line where a, a psychologist of some sort who had looked at Oswald, uh, Oswald was cited as saying, Oswald's motivation is largely explained in terms of his neurotic background his failure to achieve status, and his very deep resentment of all authority. Oswald saw a movie on TV about an attempted presidential assassination with a rifle shortly before his deed, which could have sparked him into action. So there are explanations like that, which would totally point toward Oswald as acting alone. But then there's another one where they talk about an intercepted phone call between Cuba and Miami two days after the assassination of the president, uh, the gist of which was plan of Castro carried forward. Bobby is next. Obviously a reference to Bobby Kennedy, who indeed was killed five years later. Soon the atomic bombs will rain and they will not know from where. This, however, although that would light up a conspiracy theorist, there is no indication in this record that the CIA or anyone else took this very seriously. This was like the talk of a blowhard, it seemed like. If anything, they said, well, it's a good lesson in how people can be listening in on your phone calls and you don't expect it. Lots of that in here. And is everything released now? Or, I mean, it seems like there's still maybe some more stuff out there. No, there is still some material out there. Not a whole lot. It's a, it's a small amount. The collection, uh, according to the archives, still has 515 documents withheld in full, another 2,545 withheld in part. Um, not entirely clear when or how the rest of it will be released. But again, there's just no indication that what is hiding there is some great revelation. But what could be hiding there is even more information about the details of how things were handled, how it was investigated, and maybe something that will put to rest some of these conspiracies. Although after all these years, Anderson, I wouldn't bet on it. Yeah, Tom, thank you. Uh, keep going through the documents, fascinating. Perspective now from CNN presidential historian, Tim Neftali. Hey, Tim, how big a deal is this? Well, Anderson, um, it's a huge deal that um, our government um, basically is forcing our intelligence community to release things they never wanted to release. Remember, this is the fourth or fifth bite at the apple uh, that the intelligence community had. And um, the first few go arounds, the intelligence community kept arguing for national security reasons, we can't release these details. And um, the combination of Trump's conspiracy thinking and Joe Biden's de uh, determination for transparency has led to this day where we have documents that have no redactions at all, which talk about very sensitive CIA operations that have nothing to do with the assassination of JFK, but everything to do with the secret world of the 1960s and 70s. Hmm. Does anything in the files change the official historical record and conclusion about JFK's assassination? No, I don't think, nothing, I mean, I, I, I have to say, uh, it, this was described as 10 war and peace. I couldn't possibly get through one war and peace in, in the course of an afternoon. I sampled, based on some assumptions I had about what might be out there, I, about 10% of the material, I didn't see anything, nor was I expecting anything to change the main narrative that uh, 
Lee Harvey Oswald was a self-radicalizing uh, assassin. We had had a number of them before in our history. And of course, if you think about the history of Islamist terrorism, a lot of it involved self-radicalized individuals. So that basic narrative doesn't change. But here's the crux of it all. One of the reasons we have conspiracy theories to the extent we do in our culture is that after World War II, we created a national security state that introduced layers of secrecy in our own government that meant that our own government, for reasons it felt reasonable, couldn't always tell us what it was doing at, abroad and at times at home. That was secrets, layered upon secrets, layer upon secrets, led to an explosion of, of skepticism in this country in the 70s, a series of investigations that then shocked Americans about what our government was up to. We've never recovered from that shock to our basic trust in government to this day. Now, I think it's worse now than it's been since the 70s, but if you want to see why Americans thought their government was overly secretive, take a look at some of these details. Give you a few examples. Uh, the US government illegally was um, intercepting our letters. That's not a, that, what, that became known in the 70s, but they were intercepting letters of pretty prominent people like Jane Fonda. In the 1970s, Tom Hayden and Jane Fonda sued the US government to get access to their FBI materials that had not been released in the Freedom of Information Act request they had made to the FBI. They lost. Well, today we know that um, the CIA had intercepted four letters that were sent to Ms. Fonda in the year 72, 73, um, and then she wouldn't, and wouldn't release them to her. Um, it gives you an example of sort of the, the level of surveillance that our government was yeah. engaged in, in that period. So I think people will understand now a bit about the culture of secrecy that developed in the Cold War and why there was a huge pushback in the 70s. And again, there was a huge pushback after 9-11. And one reason why we should be very worried about unrestrained yes. an unrestrained national security community.